Good evening. It has been the deadliest day yet in the increasing violence between Israel and Palestinians. With airstrikes and rocket attacks continuing, more than 40 Palestinians were killed today. The United Nations Security Council held a special session on this Sunday, and President Biden has been speaking with leaders on both sides this weekend, urging calm. But the Israeli prime minister said tonight that Israel's military operation was continuing at full force and would, quote, take time. We have two reports tonight. We begin with Richard Engel in Tel Aviv. Israeli airstrikes flattened three apartment buildings in Gaza City. There aren't rescue crews to speak of in Gaza. So when the poorly equipped teams arrived, they had to dig for survivors however they could. They pulled dozens out still alive, trapped in the rubble for hours. But they found more than 40 dead, including health officials say two dozen women and children. According to Muslim tradition, they were buried almost immediately. This funeral for 17 members of a single family. Nadine Abdul Latif is just 10 years old. There's a lot of people who died here, not only here, out there, more places in Gaza and Palestine died. P kids are dying. Mothers cry for their kids who died. Kids can cry every time because their parents died. Israel said it was attacking Hamas military infrastructure beneath the road near the buildings, which caused them to collapse and led to unintended casualties. Israel says it's destroying Hamas intelligence, tunnels, and targeting the group's leaders. But the rockets, more than 3,000 this week, are still flying. Hamas said these were revenge for the death of women and children. In Ashdod, south of Tel Aviv, Doreen McKaylee, a student, showed me her apartment, hit by a rocket that slipped through Israel's missile defense system. Looks like a normal room, but has this heavy metal door. Air raid sirens gave her 40 seconds to run to a reinforced room in her home, a requirement in Israeli buildings. I sat in the shelter and I was like, please, 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 nobody gets hurt. And it's not just rockets. Israeli police said a Palestinian rammed into a checkpoint in Jerusalem, moderately injuring four policemen. The attacker was shot dead. In Israel, many support the military campaign against Gaza as self-defense. In Gaza, many support the rocket attacks for the same reason, a cycle of violence that risks further escalation. Kate? Richard Engel in Israel for us. Richard, thank you. Calls to end the bloodshed between Israel and Palestinians are growing tonight, with President Biden and the U.N. Security Council both encouraging dialogue. Kelly O'Donnell is at the White House. A push for diplomacy. The United Nations Security Council called this virtual Sunday session to urge a ceasefire, including the U.S. ambassador. It's time to end the cycle of violence. On American television today, Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu defended Israel's strike on a Gaza building that housed the Associated Press and other media outlets. He contends Hamas intelligence used the same building. We took every precaution to make sure that there were no uh, civilian injuries. Netanyahu rebuffed pressure for an immediate ceasefire. We're trying to degrade Hamas's terrorist abilities and to degrade their will to do this again. So it'll take some time. I hope it won't take long, but it's not immediate. Today, demonstrators outside the Israeli embassy in Washington followed others around the country this week. Tonight, President Biden and the First Lady speaking to a virtual observance of the Muslim holy month of Ramadan, promised to remain involved. And my administration is going to continue to engage Palestinians and Israelis and other regional partners to work towards sustained calm. Saturday, from the Oval Office, the president made calls to Netanyahu and the Palestinian Authority President Mahmoud Abbas. Earlier this week, the president reinforced the U.S. bond with Israel. Israel has a right to defend itself when you have thousands of rockets flying into your territory. And Kelly, is Israel providing proof that Hamas was using that building in Gaza that housed media outlets? Well, Kate, Netanyahu says it provided the intelligence to, quote, our American friends, but he wouldn't say if he shared it directly with President Biden on the phone. And the White House tonight will not comment on whether it has seen that proof or Israeli intel. Kate? Okay, Kelly, thank you.